Today we're going to have some fun creating a map of our own fantasy world, just like the fictional story settings of Neverland, Middle Earth or Westeros. We'll use Photoshop's built-in tools to establish the land mass and sea, then construct the hills, mountains and deserts with some simple filter combinations, before finishing off the artwork with a vintage paper texture and place names to simulate an old map. But first, a big thank you to Envato Elements for sponsoring today's video. Envato Elements saves you time, effort and money with unlimited downloads of premium design and stock templates. We're talking over 600,000 creative items made by the world's best designers, including print templates, graphics, photos, fonts, Photoshop effects, actions and more. Envato Elements literally has all the creative assets you need under one flexible, budget-friendly subscription. Check them out today by hitting the link in the video description below. So to construct your own fantasy world, begin by creating a new document in Adobe Photoshop. I'm using a canvas size of 2000 by 1458 pixels, but artwork can be created at any size. The larger you go, the more land you'll have to fill. Create a new layer, then go to Filter, Render and Clouds. Add a Threshold Adjustment layer at the bottom of the Layers panel. Activate the Clouds layer again. You can use the command and F or control and F shortcut on Windows to repeat the clouds filter and randomise the result until you see a basic layout of continents that you could work with. Add a new layer then select the brush tool, set it up with zero hardness then begin to paint black around the edges of the canvas and over any portions of land you want to erase. Switch the colour over to white then paint within the landmass to fill any gaps or to join together multiple pieces of land. When you're done, shift and click all the layers from the threshold to the clouds layers and merge them all together. Switch over to the channels panel and hold the command key while clicking on any of the channel's thumbnails to load the selection of the white portion. Back in the layers panel, add a new layer and fill this landmass selection with a green of 92985D using the command and backspace shortcut, then deselect with command and D. Delete the original threshold version, which is no longer needed, then fill the background with a beige paper colour of E3, E2, C8. Add a new layer above the background and fill it with a blue of 83 AA, B1. Apply a layer mask to this C layer and set up the brush with reduced opacity of around 30% in the top options bar. Begin painting around the edges of the canvas to bring back some of the beige paper colour. If you erase the blue too close to the land, switch the colour to white and paint within the mask to restore the blue around the coast. Add a new layer above this blue layer, then reset the foreground and background colours back to black and white. Head to Filter, Render and Clouds, followed by Filter, Render and Difference Clouds. Change this layer's blending mode to soft light and reduce the opacity to 50%. Apply a layer mask, then paint around the coastlines to erase the texturing so it only appears in the deeper oceans. Add another new layer and render some clouds, followed by difference clouds. Then go to Filter, Stylize and Emboss. Change the settings to 3 pixel height and 100% amount. Set this layer's blending mode to soft light. Double click the land layer to begin adding some effects. Start with an inner glow layer style using the settings black with the soft light blend mode, a size of 20 pixels and an opacity of 25%. Add an outer glow next with a light blue of 6EC5F2 and the screen blend mode. Set the size to 40 pixels and opacity to 45%. Add a new layer above the land layer and generate some cloud and different cloud textures. Press command and F a few times to randomise the layout. Set this layer to soft light at 40% then command and click the layer thumbnail of the land layer to load a selection of its outline. Go to select and inverse, then delete the excess texturing. Apply a layer mask to this texturing layer, then use a soft brush to reduce its prominence in some areas to make the land look flatter. Add another new layer followed by the clouds and difference clouds filters. This time go to select and colour range and choose shadows. Set the fuzziness to 100% and range to 0. Hit the backspace key to leave just the lighter portions of the cloud texturing, then deselect with command and D. Load the selection of the land layer, inverse the selection and remove the excess. 
Apply the filter stylizing in boss effect, this time with 250% in the amount field. Set this layer to linear light to produce a series of mountain ranges across the world. Double click the layer and add a colour overlay effect with white and the soft light blend mode. Reduce the opacity to around 60% to simulate snow capped peaks. Add another new layer with the difference clouds again, then select colour range and delete the shadows. Trim the layer to the outline of the land layer, then apply the emboss filter, but this time reduce the amount back to 100%. Set this layer to linear light to generate some subtle hills. Select the land layer and add a new layer above it. Hold the ALT key while clicking between them in the layers panel to apply a clipping mask. Grab the brush tool and set up the colour to a sandy brown of CCB991. Begin painting in some deserts and dry regions on your fantasy map. You can also add an extra clipped layer to paint the colder regions with snow. Bring the brush opacity back to 100% to paint with pure white, then use a large eraser to make the ice caps softly recede. To finish off the map with an aged appearance, download a vintage paper texture. This one from DeviantArt is linked in the description area below. Open the image in Photoshop, select all with Command and A, copy with Command and C, paste with Command and V, making sure it's at the top of the layer stack, then transform with Command and T to scale the texture to fit into the canvas. Change the blending mode of the texture layer to multiply to allow the artwork to show through. Then reduce the opacity to 50% so it's not too harsh. Use the command in U shortcut for hue and saturation to bring down the saturation to around minus 60 to reduce some of the vibrant orange colouring. Add a simple levels adjustment with command in L to darken the shadows and lighten the highlights by dragging each respective slider inwards slightly. That's the main map effect complete, but you might want to spend some time adding labels to your fictional places using the type tool. Here I'm using a font I found on my system named Tratatello. Using a brownie colour of 493F37 works well for the inland places, while D5F3E7 is a nice light blue that stands out against the oceans. Adding a subtle arc text effect also helps style up the text a little. The final result is a cool old map of your own fantasy world, ideal for storybook art, tabletop gaming, treasure map party invitations or just for fun. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learned any new tricks, a like on the video would be really appreciated to help spread the word. Subscribe to stick around for more and head over to my Spoon Graphics website to join my mailing list to get my free resources bundle. As always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.